Hey, pal. Oh, um, I mean, hey guys. Oh yeah, no, hey pal is the word. It's the cooking pal. It just got delivered. And let's find out if this is the most amazing kitchen gadget for 2021. What's up guys, it's your boy Jason Keys, and as you know on this channel, Keys Life, I love reviewing the coolest gadgets. Whether it's biohacking and smart tech that makes your body better, makes you fitter, stronger, and healthier, or whether it's cooking, which also directly influences your body, I love reviewing cool kitchen gadgets. The Tovala, the Anova, the Brava, all the smart ovens on the market, we've reviewed them. Check the links below for those. But today we are taking a little bit of a twist and reviewing an, an actual kitchen appliance, not just an oven, not a smart oven, but the word smart still has to appear in this guy. This is the Molto by Cooking Pal. And it is a revolutionary device that literally is your pal in the kitchen. It will help you cook anything. And I mean anything. It chops, it blends, it kneads, it cooks. I mean, this machine is just nuts. So without going crazy about all the things it does, because we'll get into that, let's unbox this thing and see what's inside this, this giant heavy box that just got delivered. And by the way, full disclosure, as you know, in this channel, you get honest, honest, honest opinions all the time. This is one of the devices I did not purchase. The team at Cooking Pal reached out to me and they said, hey, we love your content, we love your honest, and we know that you've got a lot of subscribers that love to cook. So we're gonna send you a device so you can check it out and let us know your thoughts. So without further ado, let's unbox this guy. It is a little big and there is a way to open this. So I'm gonna get in front of it. And no, for those of you asking, I am not a lefty. It just happened to be what side of the box I ended up on in this case. So, all right, now that we got that slit open, let's, um, don't do that at home. Um, let's, uh, let's open it up. So, all right, so as I mentioned, there is a link in the comments below um, that's gonna get you $200 off because it's a pre-sale right now. So use the link and save some money if you're gonna get this. If you do, make sure you like literally stand this up in your kitchen or your living room where we're gonna unbox it yourself and open it the same way I'm opening because there's like an experience to unboxing this thing. You're gonna open it up, it's gonna be facing forward and it's literally gonna give you unboxing instructions, ask you to follow these desired steps for you know the perfect unboxing experience and let's go through them real quick. Basically slide it out a little bit, use the handles, um, open the front flap, drop it down, remove the accessory boxes, and then at the very end, pull out the multiple because that is the main device. That's the heaviest thing. And um, moving along, let's get this knife out of the way. Dangerous, dangerous, I tell you. All right, so let's see here. Follow the instructions. We use the handle and pull this guy out. Arr, 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 arr. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna pull it out all the way. Let's get this right. Get this big old ugly box out of the way. There we go. And stand this back up. So now we have it. it, says open here. Let's do that. Voila, this is fancy. I love this like experience thing. I know Apple does that with their products. It makes it super easy to uh, open them up. I'm noticing a lot of like corrugated uh, foam and cardboard here. Like I've been told that this entire box is recyclable. So for you tree huggers and health conscious nuts, um, you'll be happy about that. All right, so over here we have, welcome to the future of cooking, okay? So we put together a future of the planet in this box, recyclable, blah, blah, blah. Already talked about that. Um, and yeah, if you guys are <laughs> unboxing this, make sure you ta take pictures and tag me. And if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, wherever, comment below and let me know what you think about the device and if you end up getting it. So we're gonna start as recommended at the very top with the, the accessory box over here. Let me just go ahead and sit down. I'm tired of this. See, this one includes the steamer set and spatula. So um, open me here. Like, I mean, literally instructions everywhere. And let's get that opened. That is nice. I feel like it's Christmas every time. Everything is um, branded with Cooking Pal. I like that. Just makes it like, you know, very, very unique. So you know what you're dealing with, you know the brand, and hopefully you start recognizing it. So this one is, I believe this is that steamer slash food tray. So if you guys are making, you know, some broccoli, some asparagus, you know, and again, we're gonna 
quickly unbox this. We'll review each part and then also we're gonna put this to test and actually cook with it. So look for those additional videos if it's not in the same one here um, in the comments below. And then you have the, the large steamer tray. This one attaches right to the top of the Molto. So you can actually stack and cook multiple things at the same time. Um, one of the recipes that I was looking at that I'm super excited about trying is doing mashed potatoes with chicken and like some steamed asparagus or broccoli where you can actually boil the mashed potatoes in the Molto and then you can steam basically with the heat, like almost like steam cooking the chicken and you can have the broccoli or the asparagus and vegetables right here on top, literally like stacked one at the same time and cook an entire meal in one go. Um, so we'll get into that a little later. That is the uh, steamer uh, attachments with the lid. And I said there was a spatula in here. Now that is interesting. This is a very unique looking spatula. I'm gonna hold it over here so you guys can see every angle of it. It says cooking pal on it. It's got a little hook. So if you guys are hanging it on the wall or something like that, it seems to be made of silicone um, and it's got little flexible edges here, which is great probably for getting everything out of the Molto. And it's got this little like hook looking attachment. I'm not sure what that's for, but I bet you there's a purpose on it. So we'll figure that out. It's probably to get in some kind of you know, nook and cranny in one of these accessories or the actual device itself. Again, this is a quick first time, first opinion unboxing. So excuse me for not knowing what this is. Um, we'll set that over here. Make sure there's nothing else hiding in this box. And um, yeah, that's about it. So yes, it's got the steamer and it locks onto the Molto as shown over here. Um, you would rotate it clockwise to lock and it will click into place. It's basically simple instructions. So um, I might snap a picture of that later just to save it for reference. But I think the fancy part of this, it includes a tablet, which is the smart controller that makes this whole system work. And I think that's gonna guide us through all the steps. So we don't need these pieces of paper or cardboard box eventually. All right, moving on. Box number two. It looks like a picture of the tablet. That is the controller device that comes with it. <laughs> I'm excited about this because this is really where the tech comes into this, right? So uh, instruction cards or maybe recipe cards. Let's see what this is. I, you know what, I gotta say, this is beautiful. Like, look at the colors, look at the thought that's gone into this. This is like a super like glossy cards that are in here. Thank you for welcoming Malto into your family. We crafted Malto for your everyday use so that you can enjoy meals, nutritious, and delicious meals in the comfort of your own home. We hope that you make a great team together. Perfect. It's a user manual and a safety guide and warranty information. So as you know, nobody reads these things, but it was nice of them to include it. We'll put over here, but you know, if you're getting this, I guess spend some time reading it. I might do so a little later. We'll uh, continue on. We have a power cord. It's a standard um, three-prong US, if you're buying this in the US, um, 120 adapter, sim similar to the ones you're gonna see on a computer. So that would plug into the back of a computer and some monitors, old school monitors, but basically three prongs. So you're gonna need an outlet that has a ground on it. And uh, we'll set that over here for a second. And you have a USB-A to USB-C cable. It's white, so I'm guessing it's designed to be used around it about two feet long would be my approximate guess. And it's got purple in there, that's unique. I haven't seen that, you usually see blue on there, so that's cool. And we'll set that rubber band over there. It's got the stand. This is a plastic stand to hold the, the smart tablet over here. And it's to hold it up at a viewing angle. It's got a little rubber base inside of it. I guess that keeps it from slipping and sliding. And the rest of this is just simple plastic. It's got some rubber feet on it to keep it from, I guess, moving if you have on the kitchen counter. So nice, very well crafted. And now for the smart controller. Get rid of that foam there. I think that's about it for this box. Let's look at the instructions on this real quick. Place the mulch on a flat surface, connect it, and then turn on the hub, and then follow the instructions of the hub. So what I keep calling the smart controller or the tablet, they refer to it as the hub. So that's what we'll call it from now on, of course. And it's got a little jog dial on it. The, the dial seems to be rubberized on the outside. I think that's perfect for when you're cooking in the kitchen and you've got flour or oil or water on your hands or something and you wanna, you know, you wanna be able to control it and, um, and not have it slip or slide. 
and it's got protective um, cover here on the screen. On the back, it's got a rubberized base. It looks like it's got a speaker. I wonder if this thing talks or guides us through it. And it also has a camera, so that's interesting. So you can take pictures of what you're doing, uh, what you're cooking maybe. And there's a power button hidden under here. So if you're looking on how to turn this on, which I think I may have accidentally pressed it because voila, this thing is lighting up. I guess it's time to peel off the plastic. I literally feel like I'm unboxing like an iPad or a technology device, not necessarily a cooking device. Um, it's lighting up green. I think that's super cool, the way that lights up over there. It's just, it seems like a very modern device. It says Cooking Pal, cool little logo, and let's get started. One single button, making it very easy to follow along. We're not gonna do that right now. Stay tuned, we'll uh, walk through the setup. I'm gonna set this aside though. But uh, yeah, so far, I think this just makes for like a, a cool device to make your kitchen look super modern. And if it works as good as it looks, man, we are, we're in for a treat. So I'm gonna set that aside over here. I'll put it over here so it doesn't fall out of place. Very, very modern looking, black and white. Reminds me of the interior of my Tesla. Um, very cool, I'm impressed. Uh, let's box, get this box out of here. We're stacking up the cardboard, baby. And now for the piece de resistance, the main event. This thing is massive. I feel like I need to work out before I pull this guy out. All right, should we set it up here? I think we're gonna set it up on the sofa. Let's just, uh, let's get these uh, pieces of foam out of the way. And of course, we'll take this into the kitchen and actually like set it up and, and, and get it going. But I'm gonna lift this guy up here. Actually, you know what, I'm surprised. It's not that heavy now that I grab it. So I'm gonna put this guy right here just because it makes me happy looking at it. <laughs> so I'm so dumb, but I don't know. I love tech and this is so cool. Um, all right, so let's look at this guy. Again, I think this is about, about a foot wide, about 16, 17 inches tall. That reminds me, wait up, step on the brakes. There is a cool thing. I'm gonna link it down in the comments below. Like literally, I'll just put VR, like virtual reality or augmented reality is actually what it is, it's AR. So there's a cool thing that if you're thinking about buying this or if you've already purchased it, you can literally download this, click this link and download this app on your phone. Basically, you can see how or where you're gonna place this bad boy in your kitchen before you get it. You literally can view it through your phone and like take, you have your camera going and you can see how this would be looking in your kitchen and where you're gonna end up placing it. Now back to the device. Again, like I said, it's about a foot wide, about 16, 17 inches tall. It's just my estimate right here. If you wait for just a second, boom, right there on the screen. These are the actual specs for the main multi-unit. That's the, um, the height, the width, and also with the accessories mounted on top with the steamer trays about how tall it can get. So if you're looking at wondering like, how big is that thing? Is Jason just tiny? <laughs> All right, so back to the device here. Um, it's basically a mechanical device, of course, because it's gonna spin and do different things to this unit right here. Um, and I believe that's what this unit on the back is. It's the actual motor that drives all that mechanics. Here you've got your power port. Um, that's where that power cord would get plugged into and that USB-A connector. I believe that you would plug the USB-A into there and that would then charge this guy over here. Um, let me double check and make sure that I'm accurate. Yep, I was right. So on the left-hand side of the hub, the controller or the smart tablet that I keep calling it, but the hub is a USB-C connector. So with your USB-C connector here, you would plug it in to charge this. And if you have it sitting right next to your device, these two meaning next to each other, which I think you would, right? You can plug it in to get its power source directly from there. This would get plugged into the wall and this gets plugged in to power that up. Simple, you know? And I don't think you need to have this plugged in all the time. I think this has a decent enough battery. Maybe we'll put the specs on the screen right here if we have those. Um, and I'll actually maybe come back in a future video and tell you how long I see this thing lasting between charges. So we'll unplug it for right now. Set that aside, but that's cool how they've made it so you only have to plug one thing into the wall, not 20 different things. I know if you're anything like me, you're running out of outlets. So coming back, to, oh, and then there's a main power switch here on the back, just on and off, simple as that. So um, on the front, 
Um, it's got one single button and that I believe lights up just like this controller does. Again, we're gonna plug it in and get it going. Um, I love this look of this. It's, it's white with this kind of black display over here or this black front single button, easy to press. So if you're like cooking and you need to start, stop it, I'm guessing that that's what that would do. Um, on the lid, just like a Vitamix or any other mixer, you've got this, this slot that opens up. So if you wanna add some ingredients um, while it's maybe turning, for example, if you're emulsifying or you know making something that you need to add an ingredients to while it's still stirring. And as you can see here, that kind of locks in there, which is cool, just like a typical blender. It's got some various handles and, and locking apparatus. Again, we'll play with that. Let me uh, see what else is in here. It looks like one of the accessories that's included in here is uh, something of a, a mixing blade, or maybe this would be um, to do some kind of whipping or some dough. Again, no idea. Wait for it. If we know what this actually is, pop up on the screen right now, of course, as we do in all our videos. It's got a little steamer basket right here. Really cool. Seems almost like a cute little toy. Something my daughter would play with. Um, but it looks like a capacity that like, you know, if you were holding a good amount of food in it, it could be for, um, you know, two or three people, maybe an entire family of four even perhaps, depending on what you're preparing in there. Um, those are the two accessories that would, I guess, fit right inside it. And going further along, you have the actual, looks like stainless steel. It has a caution mark on it that says hot because not only does this thing chop, and knead and blend and everything, it actually can apply heat to it so you can cook while you're stirring. Like a risotto, for example. Have you made a risotto at home? Sitting in front of it, getting your arm work out, just turning and turning and turning. Well, guess what? Put your ingredients in here, let this thing do the work. Cooking, chopping, all at the same time. Um, inside, if you might be able to see here, it's got a couple lines that are markers one, two, and three with a max indicator. So you don't want to fill it past that max line. I like the look and feel of this thing. It, it I mean, ugh, I want to snap these handles off and I, I literally can't because it's so well built. Stainless steel, seems like it's going to be easy to watch. Those blades are probably sharp, so I'd be careful. But, oh shit. Yeah, didn't cut myself, but almost. Don't, pre <laughs> don't press on those blades. They're very sharp. Um, in a future video, we'll take, take a look and see if these are, this is something that can be um, you know, taken out and washed. Uh, but either way, it's pretty wide so you can get in there. And that's the um, handle with the locking, little lo locking mechanism for the lid. And um, it just feels good, man. It feels good in my hand. Like you can see, I hold it and it looks good. Inside here, everything seems to be like well sealed. It's got some silicone um, and you know, seems like it's also easy to clean up. There's not a lot of like little, little spots or anything. It's just really smooth. Like I literally wipe my hand all around it. So if this was a cloth I was using, I could easily wipe this down and keep it clean and functional. And uh, there you have it. There you have it. Like that. And twist it to lock it. Boom, good to go. I like it. Let's take it over to the kitchen and power it up. All right, wait, 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 wait. I was super excited about taking it to the kitchen and firing up, which we're gonna do. But I literally went to lift this thing up and I felt something on the bottom. So I'm like, whoa, let's take a look at this. So let me just um, remove this lid here real quick and remove this actual container here. I just wanted to point out the attention to detail. I mean, look at this. Like literally rubberized suction feet because this is the kind of appliance that you're gonna be kneading stuff and you're gonna be like loading up with a lot of different food. It's gonna be tall, it's gonna have hot liquid in it. You want it to stay stable. I mean, I'm telling you this device, while it's not super heavy, it's definitely stable because of the, the stance and how wide it is, but just that extra design and that care for like adding suction feet to, the, to each side of this thing, there's four of them, to make it sit on your countertop and stay in place when you're cooking. Uh, I'm impressed with the quality of this. The initial, my initial opinion, of course, not having used it yet and not being paid to say any of this. Again, this device was sent. Thank you, um, Cooking Pal, for sending this for review. Um, I'm, I'm impressed with the quality of this build. It's, it's, it's modern. 
It's using plastic in the right places to keep the, you know, the weight down, not unnecessarily using steel or aluminum or anything like that to make the device more expensive or, or um, weigh it down. But you know, it's, it's, it's modern and I feel like it's well designed and I'm impressed so far. Initial thoughts again, we'll start using it and we'll see what we think. Well, let's take this to the kitchen without further ado. See ya. All right guys, we literally moved everything over to the kitchen counter. We're here, we have everything set up and I'm gonna walk you through. Of course, when I unbox things, these videos are super real. There's actually zero, zero, zero script in any of my videos. It's just the way I like to do it. Keep it real for you guys who are my subscribers and viewers on this channel. So thanks again for watching. Um, I did do a little bit of research between the time that we took it over from the sofa and brought it over here uh, to make sure I understand all these devices because at the end of the day, if this video is not informative, then what's the point, right? So we're gonna walk through each of the different pieces of um, accessories and actual equipment that comes with this. And then we're actually gonna go through and do a, a setup where we power this guy up and, and set it up. So power cable here, this plugs into the back of the unit. I'll demo that in a second. This is the Smart Hub power cord, which also plugs into the back of the unit on both these two devices. Basically, this goes into the wall, this goes into the Molto, and this goes into the Smart Hub, okay? These are your user manuals. I haven't really read them but we'll filter out anything that's important. Maybe we'll drop it towards the end of this video on top of some pretty B-roll of the, of the equipment here and uh, some specs, some things that you might need to know. This is the butterfly whisk. Okay, this is for like whipping butters, sauces, whipped creams, things like that, aerating. Basically, it's gonna add air to it. So if you have a KitchenAid stand mixer, like I have one in the corner over there, you're used to these types of devices. So that's what goes in there. Um, next device we have here is the simmering basket. This is for boiling things like vegetables, potatoes, um, grains, anything that you might wanna strain as you lift it up that's gonna be simmering in water and, and you take it out. And then actually coming on that point, this spatula, the silicone spatula, which is kind of a very unique design. Remember when I, we unboxed it, I mentioned, has this little hook apparatus. I was wondering what it was for. Well, let me just demo that real quick. Uh, let's take the lid off this. Let's pretend like the simmering basket was in here and there was a lot of hot water and maybe you were boiling some potatoes or something of that nature in it. You basically use this hook of this side here to carry the basket out and take it for a walk, you know? <laughs> but basically that's how you do it safely without trying to stick your hand in there. Remember this is metal right here, so it will get hot. And unless you use something like an of glove or something silly, you really usually don't have the dexterity or mobility to, to grab something like this with your fingers and take it out. So this was a little cool, little innovative, you know, trick on the, um, the side of the silicone spatula. So silicone spatula, simmering basket, um, over here we have the actual Molto device. This is the main unit, the base. It's actually, look, look at this. I'm literally shaking this unit because as you remember, I noticed there's suction feet on the bottom of this. So super cool from a safety standpoint. It's got hot liquid in it. If you're chopping, kneading, this thing is dancing around. You know, it doesn't have the weight of like a KitchenAid stand mixer. So you basically the suction feet help it do that. This is your actually, I think it's a 3.1 quart. Correct me if I'm wrong, put it on the screen right here, the capacity of this. Thanks. Um, and this is a stainless steel bowl. It's got your blades in it. And um, that gets mounted right there. The lid that goes with it, basically you, you place it on there and you rotate it. There's a safety switch that gets that, that slides in here and that's what would trigger the motor. Without that going in there, I don't believe this device activates. It's very common for a lot of um, appliances, uh, like blenders and food processors that have some kind of trigger switch like that. I've lived in, in Hong Kong and India, and um, a lot of devices over there, even the very entry level devices have like kind of like safety switches like that. Um, this little cup that opens up, while it's also again, creates this passageway to add um, liquids as you're, as you're emulsifying or as you're making something that requires you to add ingredients during the cooking or kneading or blending process. Um, one thing that you'll notice about it, which I didn't even catch the first time as we unboxed it, is it's actually a measuring cup as well. It's got markings on this thing for as little as one, what? One half an ounce, my eyes, um, all the way to three and a half ounces. And um, on this side, from as little as 20 ml to 100 ml milliliters, that is. So if you're measuring small quantities of stuff, maybe some vanilla extract, maybe something like that that you'd want to add to a recipe, 
No need to go to the cabinet, grab another measuring spoon, grab another thing. Literally the measuring cup is built right into this unit and you have it in, like I said, milliliters on one side, ounces on the other. It also goes and snaps back into the lid right there. Done. Now, the other thing here is if you take this lid out and set it aside, right, which we'll do for here demonstration purposes, you now have the steamer trays, the steamer baskets, right? And this is a, a multi-layered, it's a dual approach. So you can have, this is the lid, it's clear. It's got some small vents in it. Again, for any steaming you want that to do. Obviously be very careful if you're steaming stuff because it's never evident with steam. It's practically invisible, and um, but it can burn the hell out of you. So let's be real. We all have been burnt with steam. This is the secondary tray and this is the main tray. This main one, which uh, latches on to this unit right here is, is much deeper. So if you're doing a larger quantity or something with some thickness or something, that would go here. Um, and the recipes, the guided recipes, which we'll get to, we'll showcase all of that. Um, that snaps in just in, 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 in lieu of the lid on this, basically that snaps in. And let's get this lined up properly. Let me see if I could do that. I'm not looking at the other side here. And there you go. So instead of the lid, this steamer basket has a similar apparatus just like the lid where it locks in on the handle and it triggers that switch in the back. Here's where you would place your food and let's just say you wanted to do maybe you're boiling potatoes right in this basket and so there's hot water in there that's cooking but the steam from that you wanted to simultaneously cook some chicken that would go in this tray and maybe you wanted some asparagus at the same time so you'd put this on top of it lay down your asparagus close up the lid and simultaneously again I have not tested this yet full disclosure, but from what I've seen, what I've been told, this would be a single device where you can steam or boil, I'm sorry, boil your potatoes, steam your chicken, and basically heat it with steam, which is always gonna keep it moist. And then maybe steam some asparagus or some broccoli or some carrots or something on the top tray and all in one kitchen appliance, right? So in theory, I love the idea of being able to do all this at once. And, and again, we haven't fired this up yet. I have not cooked with it yet, but the fact that this controller, this smart hub, if you will, is gonna guide you through step-by-step step on how to prepare these different recipes and how to do risotto in there while it's chopping, cooking, blending, moving things around. I love the idea that I wanna see how intuitive is. As you know, I've tested a ton of kitchen smart gadgets and we're, we're actually testing a lot more. We've got a ton of stuff on our schedule, so keep an eye out. Make sure you hit that subscribe button um, to see our future videos and like this video if, you, if this has been useful so far. So my point was behind this was like, I am not a huge fan of boiled chicken or steamed chicken for that matter, um, or a boiled steak, like when we're talking about sous vide something, right? Like I'm a foodie, I like things that are finished. So I'm not saying that this is not gonna make you good food that's edible and tasty and whatnot. I just know that if I were to boil some potatoes here and steam some chicken here and also steam some broccoli or asparagus here, while that's healthy and it could be tasty, I personally would say one more step, cast iron pan, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of butter, and give it a nice sear, some crispiness to it, salt and pepper, make it you know tasty on like while you're doing that. So I think this could save you a ton of time, regardless of whether you use it the way I described or not, where you can have a final step, which is finishing it, just like you would if you sous vide a steak or anything. So you're getting your perfect, tender, moist cooking done through this, if, if this does what it says it does, which we'll test it, like I said and then you can finish it off on the pan. For me, that final taste, that final finish, finish is super important as, as a foodie and as an amateur chef, I love doing that. So, um, but regardless of that, again, in theory, I love the idea of this appliance. I'm super impressed. The size, I actually thought it was gonna be much more massive and grossly out of proportion to look good in the kitchen or anything. And uh, like I said, there is that AR tool, which will be linked down in the comments below, the uh, pre-sale with the discount and the link to the AR so you can see how this would fit in your kitchen. Um, we're gonna move this to one of the counters in a few minutes and just see how it would fit in a standard kitchen with standard height, you know, uh, cabinets and stuff. But um, before we do that, without further ado, the thing we didn't talk about is the, the hub, the smart hub, if you will, um, which is this tablet style controller. Super cool, I just love the way they built this. It feels good in your hand. No matter how you hold it, it just feels great, right? It's the right size, I feel. They didn't go cheap and like have the screen be really tiny where it's not visible or anything. And the controller just, it just feels great to touch. 
Um, I have been told from Cooking Pal that this Malto device, this guy right here, is the first of possibly many to come. I don't want to, um, you know, indicate anything that maybe is still in the works or, which I know it's in the works, um, but maybe may not be released or something that's still way too far away. But the design behind this is that this smart hub would control not only this guy, but maybe future devices, maybe a future smart oven, maybe a future, I don't know. I mean, you tell me what, 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 what is it that could be used in the kitchen that this doesn't already do? Definitely an oven or something of that nature would be one thing that comes to mind. And of course this stand right here. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna keep we're gonna keep this rolling. We're actually gonna walk through a setup of this. This is what I love doing. Let's um, go ahead and plug this guy in. Um, for your benefit, I'm gonna set aside this lid and this. I'm just gonna move this out of the way so I don't knock it over. And we're gonna get that suction there. I'm gonna turn this around. So this is the rear side of the unit. It's got some vents probably for the, when the motor runs and stuff for some of the fans. This is your main power switch. I'm not sure that you're gonna be turning this on and off all the time. Again, I haven't used it yet, but remember, um, I guess if you're not using it and it's sitting in the uh, on the counter for even a day or two, you might wanna just turn off the main power and that just reach around the back. Uh, if you're reaching around, it's gonna be on the left-hand side. Um, and right now on camera, it's showing the right-hand side because we have it flipped around. Um, and uh, this is the power cord. We will plug this side into the unit over here. Just shove it in all the way. Make sure that's tightly connected. And again, this is going to require a um, this is going to require a grounded three prong, um, you know, 120 outlet, which I actually have one over here. So we'll go ahead and plug it in right there. And also, um, we'll go ahead and do the USB A to USB C power for the hub. Plug that in right there and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this guy around. All right, there we go. Every time I place it down, the suction cups kick in, which is great. I just love that design. All right, we'll bring the Smart Hub back over here. There we go. And like I said, on the Smart Hub, you've got this little rubberized gasket, which you keep closed most of the time. But if you are looking to charge it, you can open it up and that exposes the USB-C connector right there, which we will do for demonstration purposes. We'll plug it in and ta-da, and now it's charging at the same time it's going. So we're good to go here. Why don't we walk through a guided setup of this hub controller? I'm guessing it connects to Wi-Fi. I'm guessing a couple things happen here, but let's let's walk through it and see how that works. Again, first time you and me, let's do this together. So here we go. Um, you've got the Cooking Power logo and it says, let's get started. So let's go ahead and click, let's get started. It's got an EULA, just like every Apple device you've ever purchased. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, I have read them. Now, please, please, please. Read them. I'm not gonna do it, because I'm honest. Here we go, I agree. And let's get you connected, shall we? It's gonna show all our different Wi-Fi um, hotspots that are available. These are all my neighbors most likely here. Let's see if I can scroll through and find my own. So, so far I feel like the screen is a little laggy. Like I think I touched it way too many times or I hit the, I hit the, the controller there. So it's bouncing around a little bit. If I can get this to stop here, again, no bullshit reviews of mine, right? Like we could easily cut this out and be like, oh, look, it's super smooth. Um, something's going on right here. Either I did something wrong and like basically clicked on it too many times, or like I said, it's just being a little laggy. So let's go ahead and get that password going. Connection successful, yay, we did it! Just drop some fucking confetti right here on the screen and stuff. Yeah! Okay, um, proceed to device pairing. So I guess it needs to connect to this bad boy. So it says, make sure it's plugged in, which we've already done. Oh, it's, it's powered on. I think we have to flip the switch in the back. Ta-da! Plug the cable into Molto and electric socket, then switch the Molto on, which we did. Let's hit the next button. Am I not tapping that right, correctly? Okay, press and hold the device button until the blue light blinks and then click next. So let's hold this. Well, actually it's like, it's like already, is that already blue? It looks like blue to me. 
Okay, I guess I'll just hit next because it looks like it's already flashing blue. Ah, oh, there it is, it found it. So last four digits um, are 9E02. What are you talking about? Oh, the MAC address. Look at the bottom of the Molto and verify that your MAC address is 9E02. Let's do that real quick, guys. One, two, three, together. Teamwork. 9E02, yep, that's it, same one. Obviously, because it's the only one in this house and I don't even think my neighbors have one, so let's connect it. It's wirelessly pairing with that device. Connection successful. So I think we're picking up some pace here on a roll. The screen was a little laggy when I was entering the Wi-Fi. Again, maybe there's a little bit of user error and definitely some lag on the screen. It's got some cool demo going on here. I can hear a little bit of audio coming out of the speaker. It's just some kind of like some elevator music. Says it's got a 3.1 quart guy right there. Blades are sharp, never hold the blades by the edges like I did when I unboxed it. And um, ensure the blade is secured and locked every time. It's basically walking you through a little video here. So we'll keep looking at that real quick just to make sure we get everything right. Allow steam to escape, steam to escape when cooking, don't block it because you don't, anything with steam, you don't want it to build up. Um, high temperature contents. Yeah, of course you want to make sure that you always let the, the steam escape before opening it up right away or getting your hands in the way. Do not use the turbo speed. Again, you know what? We'll probably put some of these, these tips and tricks on the screen later on or in a later video, but basically it's walking you through, um, a kind of a overview video of what things to what to do and what not to do. And uh, that's including not overfilling it. Um, make sure that the lid is always locked. Um, never use force to take it off if it's not coming off and only open the lid when it's not moving. Um, and release, remember if you're ever opening anything with steam on it, even if it's just a pot on the stove, right? Like I teach my daughter, lift it away from you. Don't open it up to where you're looking in it right away. Just literally the opposite way. So you wanna do the same thing with this one. Um, don't place it next to a stove or on a stove. So do not place this guy on your stove. Hello. Um, and don't keep it right right next to something that's gonna expose it to a bunch of heat. So a bunch of common sense advice, but I love the fact um, that it's giving you these things. And of course, if you're gonna wipe it down or do any type of cleaning that doesn't include the self-cleaning option, um, don't, uh, you know, don't have it plugged in. Unplug it before you wipe it down. And again, while this is splash proof and everything designed for the kitchen, and so is this guy, do not submerge them in water and uh, be careful not to drop you know, your smart controller because the screen will crack. So, yep. Again, <laughs> super common dummy advice, but I'm glad they're doing it. So, um, and this thing is made of glass, so definitely try not to break it. And um, as far as repairs, I would contact Cooking Pal if something ever happened to either this guy or this guy. Um, it's not to be used outdoors, so no backyard barbecues with this guy. And, um, there's a phone number and an email address for support. So, great. There we go. I don't know why this is bouncing in as if it's being touched. So, it looks like I may have a unit. Again, this is early production, kind of pre-production. They are taking orders for this and shipping as early as next month from what I understand. So, they will be shipping the devices. I just may have an early stage unit where the screen is not super responsive. I will personally be reaching out to Cooking Pal support and maybe getting that swapped out or something. So, it is really unusual that when I was tapping the keys for the keyboard and, and again, in this case for the video, it kept like bouncing in and out. So there just might be some issue with this particular unit. Again, the good thing is this comes with the warranty. So um, I believe I heard somewhere that it was two years. I know every device on the planet that you purchase definitely comes with one year. So I'm gonna put that on the screen right now. There's your warranty information. So you know that you're in good hands. All right, so as you notice, we struggled a little bit with entering our information for the Wi-Fi, And then also as we started going through the setup, I said, you know what, before giving up, why don't we reboot this thing? It's a freaking computer basically, right? It's a tablet, it's a smart hub, it's a hub. So I said, hey, let's restart this. Let's literally power it down because we never actually properly powered it on or off after unboxing it, right? And I did that before we, we gave up on this because sometimes 
just like any computer or anything you might have at home, sometimes literally rebooting it, whether it's a $400 Chromebook or a $5,000 MacBook, literally sometimes turning something on and off fixes it and guess what? It did. So just for demonstration purposes and just so we can get a fresh start, I rebooted this guy, so let's have a look. I get to the home screen. Again, I haven't logged in or registered, so it says user slash visitor. It's got some favorite sections, some notifications, little side menu. Look at that, super responsive. So let's focus on, um, let's go back to the cooking modes, right? Let's just start from the top. You've got the option to uh, knead if you're making some dough, steam for self-explanatory, you know, proteins and vegetables, saute. I can't wait to try this. This is applying heat to this actual unit. Uh, scale for weighing things. Keep warm for when your lover is running late and you want to keep the food warm. And a manual mode as well as a kind of a self-cleaning mode so you don't have to necessarily wash this in the sink. You can wash it while it's in the unit. And we're, again, we're going to test out all those cool things. What I'm most excited about is the guided cooking options. So let's switch over to that. So that's loading here real quick. I love this. It's got this like kind of like tiled menu display with pictures. So you kind of visualize on what you're attempting to cook. Um, there's filtering here, uh, which works really well now. Again, earlier it was not working. So let's just say I wanted to filter and only show me uh, vegetable options, or I wanted to show me options with vegetable and pork. I mean, let's do multi-select there. Uh, again, haven't used this yet, but I love, love, love this UI. It's so clean. To me, UI is so important, user interface. That's the interface of the software, right? And hence the UX, the user experience. If the UI is shit, the UX is shit. Pardon my language, but right. I mean you've all done it right if something like on a, a phone or a tablet or something is just not intuitive Like you don't know where to click and it doesn't make sense and then you end up not wanting to use it at least for me So getting back to this I'm gonna unselect these but you can actually just select and say show me beginner recipes show me expert recipes um, Different things of that nature. Let's close out of that one and then sorting you can sort by um, the popularity or the latest update and that's going to obviously improve as people um, go ahead and rate these dishes. So um, as far as categories, let's take a look at that. You've got main dishes, sauces, dips and spreads, side dishes, um, you have soups, smoothies, drinks and shakes, breakfast recipes, baked treats, desserts, which is going to get me in trouble, and basic recipes. Uh, we'll work backwards, right? On the basic recipes, you have things like garlic oil, or just making rice, like cooked rice, or um, whipped cream, right? So just simple, simple things that you'd want to do in there. Um, desserts, God, I don't even want to stop there. I actually just want to go right by it so I don't get tempted. But things like butterscotch, uh, budino with salted caramel and whipped cream. Um, you've got maple pecan, ice cream, you know, I mean, just crazy stuff, right? Um, on the baked treats, rye bread, whole grain bread. I'm not sure you can actually bake in this unit, but you can definitely prep the dough, right? Breakfast, mixed berry, French toast casserole, uh, vanilla chia pudding. You've got all kinds of cool stuff. Smoothies, margaritas, this thing can do alcoholic beverages too. Um, on the soups, tomato, basil, basil uh, red curry, um, things of that nature. So on the side dishes, things like potato gratin, um, Boston baked beans, you know, like again, just like recipes that I think would appeal to most people, right? Um, hummus, that is one thing I've never tried making at home. Of course, it's really simple. It's like garbanzo beans or chickpeas, whatever you want to call it, olive oil seasoning, I guess. I've never done it before, but I really want to walk through and see how easy it is to make homemade hummus and therefore being able to be creative and play with the flavors, right? Maybe um, use some, some traditional recipes and then throw in some prohibited pantry like sauces and seasonings, which I'll be showcasing here on this channel later. Um, You've got your main dishes, mushroom risotto, salmon burgers, bacon wrapped chicken breasts, um, butter chicken with steamed naan. So some Indian dishes, there's some ethnic cuisine in here. So I'm loving this. Um, let's go through and look at kind of like a sample recipe and just click through uh, before we end this. We're not actually gonna cook today on this video. Again, this is just a little setup and introduction. So let's look at it. I clicked on the mushroom risotto. It's showing me four servings and it's showing me my ingredients with the quantities. So chicken broth, 42 ounces, black pepper, one pinch, salt, one teaspoon, uh, chili powder, one pinch, like basically one sprig of thyme, um, two ounces of butter. Now, on that note, you'll notice that a lot of these recipes are in ounces. We're not used to as American chefs necessarily counting in ounces. Of course, eight ounces is a cup, four ounces, half a cup, things of that nature. We all know that. Um, but the good thing is that this device actually weighs and measures things for you as you go. And you've got that built-in measuring cup in the lid as well. So, um, you know, 
I think once you start using the device, you'll get more and more comfortable with the units and the measurements that it, it basically specifies. Now, if you're having just two people over, you can reduce the number of servings just by tapping there and it will change the quantities. And if you're having more people over um, or you have a bigger family, you can just increase that. We'll hit start cooking and it literally goes to step one. It says, take out all of your ingredients and then you can swipe ahead. Step two, wash the parsley, shake it dry, roughly chop Parmesan and add it together with parsley to the mixing bowl. And then it hit, you can hit scale and it would weigh it, right? And then you would, um, and then great. And then you would start that. So literally like it would take you through these different setups and you can see, um, like what's in there. So right now there's nothing in there. It's actually showing zero ounces. If your device does show that there's more weight in there, you can always hit the tear button, which would make it zero out before you add ingredients. And so now if I were to add my Parmesan and everything to there, as I'm adding it, it's going to weigh it on the screen right there. The timer settings, the temperature, which there's nothing cooking in there right now. I, I, I'm telling you, I wasn't sure how I would feel about this user interface and the flow of it. And again, haven't tested this recipe. I don't know if this mushroom risotto is gonna come out good, if it's gonna be perfectly cooked, or it's gonna taste good. I don't know any of that. We don't know that yet, because we're gonna learn together, right? That's gonna be a follow-up video. Hit the like button and subscribe, so that way you know uh, when that video comes out. But so far, as far as walking through the steps, I think it's amazing. It's very clean. On the next step, prepare the mushrooms, clean the mushrooms and add them to the mixing bowl. Again, you can hit the scale um, and then you wanna chop using the turbo button uh, for two seconds. And then you can unlock the turbo by doing that and it will allow you to press that button and I think activate the turbo button. Haven't, haven't really tested that feature yet. Clean and dry the mixing bowl and proceed to the next step. All right, well guys, that's it for the unboxing and the quick setup of the Cooking Pal Molto. That's the Molto device. Cooking Pal is the company and this is the smart controller here or the smart hub, right? Um, we walked through some of the settings, the recipes, the pairing, the unboxing and everything. So in future videos, we're gonna actually cook with this. I'm gonna make a couple different recipes and I'm actually gonna walk you through. Unlike some people, I'm actually gonna show you all the steps. We're gonna turn it into a fun cooking video. You can speed through it, of course, if you want to. You don't wanna watch me grate some Parmesan and do all that stuff. And we'll taste test it because it's super important for me that the food comes out perfectly cooked as well as tastes good. Tasting you can always modify to your likings by adding some seasonings and spices. And I'll link in the comments to some of my favorite salts and seasonings uh, later on, but uh, check that out. Um, but as far as this goes, yes, it for so far, the functionality, the setup, the intuitiveness of the menus, the guided recipes, it seems super cool. I love the UI. I feel like this is a device I would be happy using. And I'm one of those people, well, if something in life is not making you happy, like, just don't do it. Like, if, if this device is pissing you off, like the Anova oven, it pissed me off. I could never get it to pair. Guess what we did with it? We put it in a box and shipped it back. This thing, this, this Smart Hub, as you noticed just a few minutes ago, was actually giving me a little bit of trouble. My fault for not properly like restarting and rebooting the device for the first time even once since it got out of thing. It's working now, it's super responsive as you saw. Um, but yeah, so far, just based on the unboxing, I give this thing a thumbs up Yay! and I recommend taking advantage of the early bird discount and the pre-offer linked below in the comments, probably on the screen right now. Check it out. If it works for you, I would say I get a green light on investing in it. If you wanna wait for my video that's gonna come out in a couple of days where we're gonna cook with this device, stand by for that. Um, but don't miss out on the opportunity to save that money right now. Again, Cooking Pal, thanks for sending this to me to test out. We're gonna play with it, we're gonna cook with it, we're gonna eat some food, and I will be back to share <laughs> my further thoughts on whether I like it or whether this is something I don't recommend. I'm gonna be honest, you know, like let's just say I hate it when I go to cook with it or some issues happen or something, then I'll let you know. But so far as of the unboxing and setup, I'm happy with it. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.